better days. The paint's chipped, the gears are rusty, and the handlebars squeak whenever you turn them. If you had a bike that looked like this one, you'd probably be a little disappointed. Maybe even a little sad. You'd probably think it was time to get a new bike. But maybe you need to think again. Oh, sorry. Let me explain what I mean. It all starts with contentment. Contentment is learning to be okay with what you have. That means you don't have to be sad about your old bike. You just have to look at your old bike in a new way. You gotta see the potential. Just look. Can you see it? All she needs is a little air in the tires, oil in the gears, and some flash. I don't have to buy a new bike when I've already got everything I need to make this bike feel like new. And that, my friends, is what I call upcycling. Let's do this. Now that's a bike I can be content with. <laughs> and as you'll learn in today's story, contentment doesn't only work with bicycles, it works with anything. Hear that? Yeah, me neither. I'll see you in a bit. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. We live in a time where it's really easy to communicate. In two seconds, I can send a text to a friend in another state or hop on a FaceTime call with my dear auntie on the other side of the world. <laughs> but when the Apostle Paul was planting brand new churches, it was not a simple matter for him to stay in touch with the new believers in places he had traveled. Every letter had to be carefully handwritten and then hand-delivered. Plus, travel was often difficult and dangerous. It would take weeks, if not months, for a letter to even arrive. So whenever Paul wrote a letter, he chose the very most important things to say. Every word mattered, including these verses he wrote to the believers at the church in Philippi. I have learned to be content no matter what happens to me. I know what it's like not to have what I need. I also know what it's like to have more than I need. I have learned the secret of being content no matter what happens. I am content whether I'm well-fed or hungry. I am content whether I have more than enough or not enough. I can do all this by the power of Christ. He gives me strength. See, Paul wanted the Philippians and us to understand that God can help us be okay in any situation, no matter what we face. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, yeah, that's easy for Paul to say. I mean, and that was true. To start off, he was a well-to-do, well-known, respected religious leader with a lot of power. But when Paul met Jesus, 
Why are you opposing me? Who are you, Lord? Everything changed. Paul's new outspoken beliefs upset both the Jewish leaders who had been his friends and the Greek and Roman leaders who were afraid Paul would cause trouble. Paul himself recorded some of the crazy situations he experienced during his travels. In a letter to the Corinthians, he explained, I have been in prison. I have suffered terrible beatings. Again and again, I almost died. Three times, I was shipwrecked. I have been in danger from rivers and robbers. I have been in danger from my fellow Jews and in danger from Gentiles. I have been in danger in the city, in the country, and at sea. I have been in danger from people who pretended they were believers. Often I have gone without sleep. I have been hungry and thirsty. Now, Paul truly understood what it was like to face difficult situations of every kind. In fact, when he wrote his words to the Philippians about contentment, he was under arrest and couldn't even leave the house. Now, your story is different from Paul's. If you were to tell a trusted friend what you were going through, it might sound something like this. I've had to wear my same sneakers, even when my friend got a new pair. I've had to live one place during the week and another on the weekend. I've had to settle for a movie night even though I wanted a sleepover instead. I've had to live with a cast on my arm for two months. I've had to sit alone at the lunch table. I've had to miss summer camp because dad took a job that didn't pay as much. I've had to eat meatloaf at home when I wanted to eat out. God knows your story. He knows all the ups and downs you face. He knows what you have and what you don't have. But no matter what happens, God loves you. He's given his only son, Jesus, to make a way to live with him forever. He's provided everything you need to choose contentment. As Paul reminds us, I have learned to be content no matter what happens to me. I am content whether I have more than enough or not enough. I can do all this by the power of Christ. He gives me strength. The Apostle Paul went through a lot in his life. He'd been hungry, he'd been in trouble, he'd been in prison, but somehow through it all, he knew how to be content. How could he do that? How do we do that? Well, we can find out in the letter he wrote to the Philippians, two things. First, Paul wrote, I have learned to be content no matter what happens to me. The key word there is learned. Paul had to learn to be content, and so do we. Just like we learn what two plus two is and how many continents there are, seven, six, five. Sometimes learning contentment will come easy, but sometimes learning contentment takes time. You'll learn over time how to adjust your attitude and be okay when you don't have everything you want and when things don't go your way. The second thing Paul wrote that will help you be content is this. I can do all this by the power of Christ. He gives me strength. When you put your trust in Jesus, you can rely on him and the Holy Spirit to give you strength when you're not feeling content about something. And that's true if you didn't get what you asked for on your birthday. It's true if you didn't get the part you wanted in the school play or the position you wanted on the football team. And it's true with bicycles. Here's the one thing to remember today. God can help you be content. When you feel sad or disappointed because something doesn't go the way you expect, talk to God about it. Ask him to help you see your situation in a new way. Could be there's more potential there than you think. I think I'll try out my new and improved bike now. I know, it's going to ride great. But even if it doesn't, I'm going to try and be content. See you next time.